What did you think of this Raw show? Um, it felt like uh, Raw, you know. I mean, I mean, the, the the positive is there were no shitty finishes, you know, which is like unbelievable on a Raw show. I mean, last week had had two non finishes. I mean, there was reasons for them, um, you know. Whereas before we would have these non finishes just because no reason we would just have them. So I mean, we. We had winners and losers, so that was nice. Um, you know, Dexter Loomis being brought in. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we'll see if he's got a great idea for Dexter Loomis. I was not, um, you know, I mean, it's like, we'll wait and see. We'll just wait and see how, how that works out. I mean, it wasn't like, uh, like if I was doing a list of people that, like, I was dying to see back that they cut. Um, you know, Dexter Loomis wouldn't have been on that list. Um, but you know, he, I don't know. Well, you know, it's there's like a he, lot of great guys that they cut that unfortunately are now unavailable. Jonah, for example. I mean, it's not like you're going to pull him out of the G1. I'm sure he's signed with New Japan, but yeah, you know, the, the list of, the list of guys that they cut that are currently available is, I don't know how big that list is. Yeah. You know, the thing with, 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 um, Sam Shaw is, is that. It's like, I would rather, if they're going to open a roster spot for somebody, that they pick a guy who's 24, 25 years old that they have in developmental, um, rather than a guy who's 38 at this point, and then they're just starting him off on the main roster. Um, you know, if it was a guy, like, if it was a guy who was like, okay, um, you know, no-brainer, right? I mean, even cro Cross is is um i mean the cross act like I, as far as cross goes i've always thought like i know people in wrestling who are, who are very 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 high on cross nice guy and um good look but when he was in nxt they they pushed him so hard and i felt that like like what they did to push him was really good scarlet was good the music was good. The entrance was good. Um, but then when the match started, I mean, it wasn't that he was bad, but he wasn't great. Well, I think part of it is also you were, when they started pushing him, I mean, you were you were coming off the era where it was like, you know, you had the Adam Coles and the Finn Balors and the Nakamura's and the Samoa Joes and, you know, all of these great, great, great workers, Champas and Garganos. And then they went to Karrion Cross, Killer Cross. And, and they, they built and they built everything around him, made him undefeated. Yeah, and it was like it was a very it was very jarring coming from the the <laughs> really great workers that they'd had in that spot. So my point is on the main roster the the WWE main roster audience is not conditioned to your super workers headlining shows necessarily. I mean, there's good workers, there's great workers, but I think it might be a little easier to push him on the main roster than it would have been to try to push him in NXT when it was the super indie. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but you know what? I mean, he was on the main roster, and he did better in NXT. Now, granted, he was pushed bad, no doubt about he it. Was he was pushed pu horribly on the main roster. He was pushed horribly. He lost to Jeff Hardy on his first day. Yes, he was pushed horribly. But at the same time, I mean, he was out there in the ring having matches, and he wasn't knocking anybody dead. You know, he was just a guy. Uh, it, the, the advantage in NXT when he was in there with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly and all, the, all of those guys, Finn Balor and all those guys he ran over, and they had him beat, is that... At six two, you know, like at six two, he's like a monster compared to all these guys. So, from a visual standpoint, you could go, "Well, he's not as good a wrestler as these guys are, but he's so much bigger." And he had that kind of, you know, big muscular guy who who could do some kind of cool shoot stuff. And you know, it's like it's sort of like the the thing of oh, the believability. And it wasn't really that big of a deal. And you know, NXT was going down when when he was there. Um, and I'm not blaming him. I mean, it was, but that was the period when they were going down was when they started focusing on him. But um, it's like in, in NXT, he at least had something that stood out, which was his size and his and his build and, and the ring and the entrance and everything like that. In WWE, it's like 
Yeah, you know, he's, you know, I mean, he's 6'2", but, you know, freaking McIntyre's, you know, 6'4", 6'5", and Roman Reigns is bigger than him. I mean, it's not like he's a giant compared to the rest of these guys. I mean, he's just, you know, Miz is probably an inch shorter than him. You know what I mean? Um, So it's like, and you don't think of Miz as being a big guy. Um, You know, I mean, he'll be a big guy next to AJ, but, um, you know, so the, like, with NXT, he had the size thing going for him. You know, look, they got Omos and all of these guys. This, you know, he's got a good build, but it's it's like Sheamus got a good build. You know what I mean? Sheamus is bigger than he is. You know, so it's like his size isn't that big of a deal. Um, you know, Scarlet will probably help in some ways. Um, but and all the guys that I'm mentioning, you know, are whether it's Roman Reigns or Drew McIntyre or Sheamus, they're all much better than he is. So. It's really about the smoke in the mirrors. Now, if you're a great promoter and everything like that, and you can manipulate manipulate your fan base, and you're good at that, you know, you can make anyone a star when you're hot. The one thing I thought that was good for him was they brought him in in clearly a very top position. By the way, um, for Cardiff, it is still um, Roman and Drew, and I was told, of course. This can always change, but I was told that it's really not going to change. That that they have, that they feel that that has to be the match. You know, they don't want to be whatever. Um, so as far as like when he's getting his shot at Roman Reigns, because obviously they're building to that. I have no idea when that will be, um, because Roman Reigns is. is well, working. dude, we got months and months and months after Cardiff before WrestleMania, where Roman's going to need some challengers. Yeah, and he's um, run through everybody. But he's not working as many. He's not working that many dates. Um, Can we get I the mean, titles off this guy or what? Well, I don't think Drew's winning the title. Well, um, I don't think I don't think he's any, I, I mean, I don't think I don't think anyone's getting the title from him until after the Rock match. I mean, I could see him perhaps, perhaps they could do something where they beat him and he beats the guy back, like with Drew. I mean, I know that some people have kind of like talked about that idea. But they're really playing up this, like, 700 days thing. And well, that's all fine, things. but, I mean, somebody else had the idea, and obviously you're not going to do it in Cardiff if it's going to be a one-on-one, but the idea of, like, doing a a three-way, or maybe not even a three-way, but something where it's like one fall is for one title, one t- fall, uh, falls for the second title. So someone can beat him for one of the titles, but he still keeps the other title for The Rock. Because the idea of putting the title on a guy who's never around... I mean, that's the exact same thing that everybody complained about with Brock. But at least at that point, there was another title. Now we've only got one title, and this dude's never around. Well, Which that's... is ironic, because that was the entire storyline for one of their 18 matches, was Roman complaining that Brock was a champion and never showed up for work. It's like, it is a curse to ever use that line in a promo, because you ultimately will be that guy one of these days. If you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember, you know, like when John Cena... Beat Cena in the ass, it beat Roman when, when, in the ass. It, when when John Cena was doing all those promos on Dwayne, and, you know, later he was just like, he was so embarrassed that he did those promos. You know what I mean? And then he was, you know, Vince told him to do them. You know, Vince thought it would make for good business, but, you know, he, you know, oh, you went to Hollywood, blah, 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 and then, you know, Cena basically followed everything that Dwayne did, you know, and, uh, you know, so whatever, but... um yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think. I mean, unless they do like, a t- unless he comes in for a TV match. Um, I Roman right now he's scheduled for Cardiff, and I think he's scheduled for Survivor Series. And after that, I don't know. But um, you know, not not Philadelphia. He's not on that card. You know, which is the Extreme Rules show. So um, it wouldn't be there. So it's it's a ways off. But you know, they're bringing him in in a top position. And um, I think that uh, I think that Paul will have a longer leash with him in the sense of if it was Vince, you know, he'd give him three weeks and then he'd panic and just say, ah, you know, I couldn't get over, you know. But with Paul, I think that they'll go a long time because he pushed him for forever and ever in NXT. And their mentality was that if we keep pushing him, you know, I made him undefeated and everything. We keep pushing him. He'll eventually get over. And I think that that will probably be the mentality here is that uh, we keep pushing him um, and, you know, he'll get over. So, they'll, they'll, you know, it's it's an interesting one. I mean, I could see like the thing with him is, is that I can sort of see 
their mentality that he could be a top guy because he looks exactly like they want the guys to look. Shaw kind of does too. You know, he's not quite as big, but he's still got a good physique and everything like that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I mean, like, I know Shaw's, he's, he's unique and everything. So, you know, and different is good. You don't want a, whole, a roster full of 80 guys who are all the same. I mean, and, and he is different. But um, aside from with when he worked with Indy Hartwell, I was never really into Shaw. I was never into Shaw in, in, um, when he was in TNA at all. And in, um, you know, he did stuff playing off of Indy because she's actually very good when it comes to not wrestling, but everything else as far as being a character. So that worked out pretty well. And he, you know, played off Gargano, who's got some good comedic timing and everything. And I suppose there might be guys on the main roster he can play off with the comedy and everything. So, but anyway, you know, I mean, he's, you know, again, I think with, with me, like when, when, it, when it comes to like a, a, what I would call a marginal guy like Shaw, as opposed to Cross, who they're going to, um, you know, they are going to make a main eventer and they've decided that he's going to be a big thing. Um, I would rather see a young guy than, than, um, and, and give a young guy a new gimmick and rather than focus on, cause I mean, the weakness is, is that they don't have the, you know, they hardly have any young guys. And, um, I think that they need to, you know, they need to start having some young guys out there on that TV show. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.